All right, it's good to be back in the house of the Lord this morning, and we uh, have been studying some this past week, and uh, I believe the Lord has helped me to see uh, uh, what He would have us to uh, read about this morning, and, and I, want, I want to read some about alms this morning. It's a very important thing, and uh, the Bible encourages it, and i just give you a few scriptures this morning where that you can think upon it, that you can even make notes if you want to of where they're at and uh, read upon them because it's all through the Bible and uh, uh, Jesus done it uh, and the disciples done it and the churches uh, should be uh, have a desire to do it and so we're going to try to study a little bit this morning on the book of Alms. Uh, on Alms. In the book of uh, Matthew for our first reading chapter 6 Matthew chapter 6 and verse 1. <clears throat> All right. Chapter 6 and verse 1, it says, Take heed or listen or be aware of what you need to do that you do not your alms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, you have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Now, the alms is an act of mercy. Uh, it's to those in need of money, food, clothing, prayer, uh, uh, encouragement. These are all things that you can use the word alms for to encourage people to uh, show mercy with uh, uh, prayer, with uh, conversations, with your, uh, if they need money, if the Lord lays it on your heart, you need to do that. But these are some of the acts of alms. And it says here, these things that you do, and I would like to say this this morning too, that alms is not a tithe. Alms right. is something, alms is something all through the Bible where that people were out begging or uh, asking uh, or, or, or things like this. And the alms that you give are to those people that you are around, people that need your help, people that are less fortunate than you are, but it's not your tithe. Your tithe right. is a separate thing that we understand about in 1 Corinthians. We'll read that in a little bit, but I want to make it clear this morning that alms, uh, and so many people say, well, uh, I don't tithe the church, but I... I give to this one, or I give to that one, or I help this or that. Well, that's good. But the thing of it is, tithing is altogether a different thing. And right. Tithing is something that you do because you love the Lord. It's, it's, he, didn't, he didn't force us to do it, but he says if you do it, you do it in a certain way with love and, and a certain amount. Uh, he offered as a tithe, as a tenth. And so that is a, a different story. That is a different study. But we're talking about alms this morning. I want to make that clear. So he said here, he said this here on, the, on verse 2. He says, Therefore, when thou doest thy alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Amen. And so this morning, as we study this, the one of the one of the very first points is that you do it because you love the Lord, because you have a, a desire to help those that are in need, and you do not do it to get the pats on the back of men. Right. Because, listen, that's the desire of the flesh, people. Mm -hmm. the, the desire of the flesh is to be uh, uh, glorified of man and to be bragged upon and to pat them on the back and say, boy, you sure are a good fellow. Listen, that's not what we do alms for, but we do Amen. it because we love them, because we love the Lord, or because that we see a need this morning, because this morning I can go back to a time when the Lord supplied arms to me 
Mm -hmm. And Jesus died on the cross of Calvary for me. I needed those arms. I was poor, undone, wicked, and without Amen. the Lord. And he seen me mercifully. He handed me out arms. He, he let the Holy Spirit speak to my heart. He let people, uh, a, a man preach to me that Amen. got my attention. And he done it without any praise of mankind and the Lord Jesus Christ came and died for my sins and he said you don't tell anybody what I've done or anything so that is the arms that I really remember and so many times so many times in my life Jesus Christ has helped me through the Holy Spirit and comforted my heart Amen. He's, he's laid it on people's hearts to come by and do this and to help me and to this and to that. And listen, I can't praise him enough for it, but I can do this. When I see someone and the Lord's dealing with me to say, he needs, he needs help, I can do it and do it in a way that I don't boast myself. I don't, hey, I'm, I'm going to give this man because, listen, that's not the right way Amen. to do it. And, and what I what. What he says was this. He says here that the, 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 the people that do, rings this bell and jingles this and uh, money in front of people and says this, they have their reward. Right. And their reward this morning, people, is people coming up to them and patting them on the back and saying, mm -hmm. that was a good deed you did. And all that walk away like a, a game rooster mm -hmm. and, and saying, oh, yeah, boy, I really did something good. Listen, that's not the way. Amen. That's just not the way. But that's the flesh for you. Mm -hmm. And listen, the, the flesh, the flesh of the booger. Amen. And I have the biggest trouble in this world with my flesh. And I have, I have so much to, that my spirit has to put up with with this flesh. And so many times I just get beside myself and I say, Lord, I can't handle it. I can't do it because, listen, this flesh is something else. Mm -hmm. And I, my spirit is altogether different from my, mm -hmm. my flesh. And when I do anything like that, I try my best not to think of myself as doing anything that's straining me or doing anything because, listen, whatever I've got in my pockets, in my home, in the bank, or whatever, it comes through the Lord Jesus Christ and His grace and His mercy let me have these things and let me enjoy these things and I should have enough decency about me and I should have enough love of the Lord within me to want to share it there. Amen. And so this morning, this is a beautiful, this is a, such a beautiful thing this morning to understand what alms is. Now notice, notice in verse 3. But when thou doest alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth. And years and years and years I, I wondered how can I tithe without my left hand knowing what my right hand is doing. He's not talking about my tithe. He's talking about alms. And he's talking about don't let those people over there or don't run no beyond and tell somebody else, hey, I give him so-and-so or I give him so-and-so. I helped him so he just started that thing. Maybe. That's what he's saying. Don't let nothing, it's between you and God. Amen. And what you want to, what he lays on your heart, you do it. And listen, he's always there. He's always there to take up the gap. If you spend your grocery money, on something that a, and a poor boy out there needs, and the Lord, the Lord is saying, "Hey, you help him. You spend that money." Amen. Because listen, <laughs> the Bible says that he's he owns his, God owns the cattle of a thousand hills and the gold therein. So he ain't went broke. Amen. He ain't he ain't filed bankruptcy. He's got plenty. And listen, when you serve the Lord, He's always there. And he'll, he will take care of you regardless of what, what comes and goes. He's going to take care of you. So this is an assurance this morning. Now he says here, But when thou doest on, let, let thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth, that thy alms may be in secret, and thy Father which seeth thee in secret himself shall reward thee openly. So this morning... 
when you uh, when the Lord blesses you with a, a new car, new suit of clothes, or something, you come wearing these things, driving that, or a new home, or whatever, listen, you ought to give God the credit. You ought to go, you ought to go and listen, wearing a suit of clothes, a new suit of clothes, or whatever, people seize it. And they say, oh, I like that. Yeah, God gave it to me. Mm -hmm. But see, he's rewarding you openly for the, maybe the 50 cents that you give to a, a beggar that was needing alms. And so this morning, this is some of the things that, that we want to talk about. Now look, I want you to turn over with me, if you would, to the book of Luke. And we're going to read just a little bit there. In the 12th chapter, in verse 13, and he's talking to you about uh, a parable. In verse 13 of, of the book of Luke, And one of the company said unto him, Master, speak to my brother that he divide his in inheritance with me. And he said unto him, Man, who made me judge or a divider over you? And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness or stinginess, for a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesses. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentiful, and he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do, because I have no room where to bestow all my goods? And so he went out, and he found all the poor people, and he gave them all a handout, and he said, Praise the Lord, I got this. No. That's not what he said. Right. But he said this, and he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room for it to stow all my fruits. And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there will I bestow all of my fruits and my goods. He got it made. Mm -hmm. He don't have no desire to give nobody nothing. Right. He don't even thank God for it. He's just wanting to know how to control all of that and keep it safe. And he says, hey, I'll just tear down the building and build new ones, better ones. And then I can say to my soul, soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, thou fool. Mm -hmm. Now, the Bible says that the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Mm -hmm. And he called this man a fool. Now, the Bible says for us not to call a man a fool because we're judging. But God has the right. Amen. And he's putting it here why that we're not to call a man a fool is because that we're judging. But he, like I said, he's the one. And he said, that thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee then who shall they, those things be which thou provideth? So is he that layeth up treasures for himself and is not rich towards God. Amen. He does not have the love of God in his heart, does not feel like that he has received anything from God, probably hasn't received anything from God because he's have a different heart. But listen, this man wanted this all for himself. He had no desire to, to, to divide it among anybody, to share it with anybody, to even thank the Lord. It don't even say anything about him thanking the Lord for all the crops that he gave him. He don't think and say anything about the Lord, uh, him thanking the Lord for helping him build new barns, nothing like that. He just, he's just consoled with himself and he wants that, and he and that's his desire to keep it. And listen, that is not a way that we, as God's people, should act. Amen. And so this flesh, people, this flesh will say, "Hey, he don't need it. He's probably got more than I've got." But listen, if God says to you, Amen. "You need to give to that person," listen, you better hear God and not hear this old flesh, because mm -hmm. this old flesh 
is nothing but sin. And so you listen to what the Holy Spirit speaks to your heart. And when he says, you do this, you do that. Mm -hmm. Because you're going to find out if you don't, you're going to be in a world of hurt. So here, here is the thing that, that was struck, struck me as, and, and I, want to, I want to read you something else here in Acts 3. If you would turn to Acts 3, we're going to read just a little bit more about some, some uh, alms. In Acts 3 and verse uh, 1, or, yeah, verse 1, Acts 3, verse 1, Acts 2, I'm sorry, yeah, Acts 3, I'll get it right. Acts 3, verse 1, and it's talking about Peter and John. In the book of Acts, chapter 3, verse 1. Now, Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer. Being the ninth hour, and a certain man lay lame from his mother's womb, was carried whom they did lay baby at the gate. Now, he's saying this this morning, that this baby was born this way, and he's been that way ever since he was born, and they take him up there every day, and they lay him on the temple steps or on the temple around the temple and when people come in to make an offering or a sacrifice or whatever he was there begging and he, he was saying alms alms for the poor notice this and he lay daily at the gate of the temple which is called beautiful to ask alms of them that entered into the temple and when who seeing peter and john about to go into the temple ask of alms and Peter, fasting his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none. And don't you know that was very disappointing to mm -hmm. him? And listen, this shows you this morning that every time that the Lord asks you to help someone, to encourage someone, it's not through money, it's not through worldly possessions sometimes, but listen what Peter said to him. He said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise and walk. Amen. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. Now there's several things here. One thing is, when Peter said this to him, the man did not jump up. But listen, a lot of times when you're praying for someone and you're, you're trying to help them, listen, there's another encouragement sometimes that you can help them with, and that is to assist them in other things that mm -hmm. they need. You're praying for them, and you're praying, hey, I pray that you, you will, that you can have food on your table or a bed to sleep in or something like that. But you don't believe it at that because Peter didn't. He reached down his hand to the man and gave him a, 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 a tug, and it, then everything happened. And that's the same way with us this morning when we're, when we're doing the, when, we, when the Lord asks us to do something, we should see the need of the arm, of the, uh, the help, but we need to go that extra mile. Mm -hmm. Because listen, Jesus went that extra mile with us, mm -hmm. and it was, it was a rough mile, I'll tell you people. He, crawled, he, he pulled that old cross up the hill of Calvary. Amen. And he drug it all the way till he fell. And listen, that's as far as he went carrying the cross. But listen, we can go always go a little bit farther. Amen. When we try to help someone and uh, encourage them, if nothing else, if nothing else, just encourage them from the mouth and and and, and give them a little, if you give them a little something, say, I hope this will help you. I'm doing this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so this morning he said here, uh, after he was. After he received strength to his ankle bones and received strength, and he leaping up stood and walked and entered with me Amen. into the temple. Hey, he's been there's a he's been a changed man, people. <laughs> and that's the same way with us this morning. When we obey God and when we obey, listen to what the Holy Spirit says about these things, and don't listen to this old flesh telling us how how you need to keep that because he's probably better off than you are and he's laying there half naked. 
Mm. Listen, we need to we need to we need to pray that that we will get closer to the Lord. Amen. And be a greater servant to Him, because listen, we're going through once. And listen, you 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 leave that man, you leave that woman, you leave that person, and you walk off, and the Holy Spirit starts dealing with your heart. And people, that's the terrible thing in this world when the, when the Holy Spirit starts telling you, you you didn't you didn't do what God wanted you to do. And listen, I the Spirit said, I told you that you needed to do it, and you turned your back on it. Now it's your time. Hmm. And listen, it may not be death. It may not be a loss of money. It may not, your house may not burn down. But listen, that constant nagging of the, of the Spirit of God telling you, hey, you shouldn't have done that. Mm. You shouldn't have done that. And you're there, what are you going to do to me? Worrying about that. But listen, that's what I'm telling you. I, and I went through it. I know what I'm talking about this morning. So here, here, here he said he leaped up and walked. And all the people in verse 9, all the people saw him walking and praising God. What a witness he was, Amen. what a witness for Peter and John. And they didn't, they didn't do any praise or anything. They just said, uh, what I have, I give to you. And it didn't cost him, a, it didn't, but it was a, it was a, it was a, it was a lifesaver. And so he says, and all the people saw him walking and praising God, and they knew that it was he which set for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. And as the lame man which was healed, Peter helped John, uh, helped Peter and John, all the people run together unto them into the porch that is called Solomon, the great and wonder. And so we see here this morning the thing that he did. And he obeyed what the Lord said. He says, and when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on it? As though by our own power or holiness we had made this man whole to walk. The God of Abraham and, the, and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our Father, hath glorified his Son, Jesus, whom ye delivered up, and did, denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. And so again, he's making an example here. We could have denied this man. We could have turned our way. And he gave them an example of how they did Jesus Christ when Pilate was judging them and said, they said, kill him, crucify him. We don't have nothing to do with him. And so this is this was a great, a great miracle here in America. Amen experience and an arm that we should never forget and so this morning these things that I, I've told you are uh, 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 very important and you should you should think about them. now I want, I want to read you one more thing I've got a, a Romans I believe it is in Romans 12 I wrote, I, wrote, I wrote a little bit here in verse uh, 3 Romans 12 verse 3 For in verse 3 it says, For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that, that is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to Amen. think, but to think soberly according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. Amen. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office. So we being many are one body in Christ and every one member of another. Having then gifts differently according to the grace that is given to us. Where, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the portion of our faith. Or ministering, let us wait on our ministering. Or he that teacheth on teaching or he that exhorteth on exhortation. He that giveth, let him do it with simplicity or with not any hypocrisy about him. He that ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness, let love be without 
dissimulation Amen. and and horror or, or or hate that which is evil cleave to that which is good and so this morning we need to follow these directions and uh, in verse and in First Corinthians I, I told you I'm going to read this to you First Corinthians 16 and verse two or, or verse one. Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the church of Galatia, even so do. Upon the first day of the week, let Amen. every one of you lay by him in store, as God hath prospered him, that there be no gathering when I come. And when I come, whosoever ye shall approve by your letters, them will I send to bring your liberties, liberalities unto Jerusalem. And if it be met that I go also, they shall go with me. So he's saying this morning, this is the difference between the alms. He don't give no time. He don't give no exact time on when are you to offer your alms. But he does on the tithe. And so we cannot substitute our tithe for these alms. Right. These alms are more like a love offering, or that's what they are, or a alms. But our tithe is altogether a different thing, which we do this because we love the Lord, because He has He has given us what He has given us, and listen, He wants us to appreciate it by giving him a tenth of it. Amen. And you say, well, uh, I can't do that. Well, that's, that's not, it's not, it's not mandatory. But listen, there is a thing that goes along with this that he says that if you do these things, I'll pour out a blessing. I'll open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing which you cannot receive. Amen. And so when, when, when we short ourselves and say, I can't afford it, we're deceiving ourselves. Because, listen, Jesus or said here, or the Bible says, and, uh, that, he would, that God would pour us out a blessing. And uh, he's already done it. And mm -hmm. so why should we not believe him? He's given us a healthy body. He's given us a home. He's given us this. He's given us that. He's given us salvation. Uh, why, can't, why can't we uh, use what little worldly possessions that we acquire every week and do that? Amen. And that way, that way, uh, you can lay down the night and say, well, tomorrow that window may open up and that blessing may fall. Uh, and, you know, it's every time you know you, you can't say well God I did this now, now pull me out of it's it don't work that way but in his own time he will he will he will he will keep his promise if you stay straight with him so anyway that's the difference between alms and tithing and uh, Amen. I hope that uh, that you've got a blessing out of this because a lot of times we have these we have these opportunities to to help people and I know uh, you can't you can't do it every time because a lot of times the Lord don't even, the Lord don't speak to you. Right. But when He does, when He does, make sure that you listen to Him and make sure that you make an effort to uh, do what He's asking you to do because uh, He's your master. Right. And we're hey, uh, we got a book of Diamond and reading it, and it's about a slave to God. And we're a slave to God. Mm -hmm. we're, we're, you know, and he said one time, I call you no more servants, but I call you friend. But listen, also, the slave back in the old days was one that was owned by the man. He wasn't, he wasn't hired to come in day by day and do this, but he was owned. But listen, a good master, which we have, takes care of his slaves, mm -hmm. takes care of his loved ones, takes care of the ones that serve him. And so I like to think about it as this, I want to be a good slave. Amen. I want to, I want to do what God would have me to do. Yeah. And uh, 
so that way, uh, I, ha I have no problem with uh, serving him. I have no problem with laying down of the night and going to sleep. Amen. But that's that's uh, that's uh, another another thing. Uh, sometime maybe we'll talk about that uh, being a slave to God. Uh, that's that's something that we uh, we shouldn't fear because listen. If uh, if you're a good slave, you've got a good master. I, I, I'll guarantee you. I'll guarantee you you've got a good master. Mm -hmm. there, there's no doubt about it. You, the, the slave may not do his thing like he, with a heart of love that he wants to. But listen, you've got a good master. Amen. Yeah. And he's always there. And he's the one that took care of you. He's the one that sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die for your sins. So we, with that, we'll say thank you for listening. and. Uh, pray for us as we try to uh, run another class next Sunday. Yeah. Yeah.